My name is Jan. I'm here with Dmitry, and uh, we're going to talk about how uh, Linux containers can help you to manage development environments uh, for IoT and embedded systems. And we are going to do it uh, by uh, <coughs> showing uh, open source framework for uh, managing build environments and containers called Rebuild. And before we are going into uh, the how, we need to ask ourselves why. And why, uh, if you're dealing with embedded or uh, IoT systems and we develop for one of the devices, you know that in order to uh, compile the code, you need uh, to usually to deploy some tool chain, SDKs, and uh, those have different dependencies, different compilers. Uh, you might need different tool chains for different devices. Uh, you might need uh, to update some packages. And uh, if you have a code base that works on, diff on, uh, on the line of the devices, on several devices, or you have uh, SDK that is changing and you want to update some packaging, always this management of packages, of compilers, of your actual development environments inv involves some kind of a pain. And there are many tools that are trying to help you in this. So <clears throat> the question is, and, and of course, always there is this thing that it works on my machine, so sometimes it you can compile it in your environment, but it doesn't compile on the build server. We have some issues in the CI. And then you need to, to answer yourself, OK, so what exactly happened here? Uh, so what we would like to have, and there's several on different levels. So if we are talking about individual uh, contributor to a project or individual developer in the organization, we would like to be able to run multi uh, environments for multiple platforms on our same development machines. And we want to have immutable build environments. So when we, do, when we run our builds or we do some actions with our build environments, it doesn't change if we don't want it to change. And we want to have the same environment uh, as we use on our development machine, also in different uh, other places in our organization, so build server or CI server. And if we are talking about the team, we would like to share our build environments between the team members, and we want to have the unified experience uh, between the team members. It doesn't matter what kind of distros they are using or even what kind of operating systems they are using for their development. And we would like to track uh, the versioning of the environments or how they were created. And if we are talking about the organization itself, then there are different. Then uh, we need to look to the future. So what will happen in several years when the people that are working now on the product or created the environment today, uh, they are no longer with us or no longer with our project. So what we want to do in this case. And we also have the certification uh, issues. So if we are talking about medical devices or automotive devices, we need to be able to audit our software that we build. And we, we need to go and show that we used exactly specific packages that were uh, specific libraries that were certified. And they, they're used during our build. So how, one, how we would like to solve it? Uh, we created an open source framework to uh, manage build environments that we called Rebuild. And it leveraged Linux containers and uh, enables seamless integration of the containers with your existing uh, build, build environments and, ex and integrating your existing in build environments into containers itself. It will stop this, uh, but it works on my machine situation. And it will enable the e easily share uh, build environments between the different team members. So I want here uh, Dmitry to help me with the demo. So what we are going to show now is uh, we have some sample source code in our local directory. And uh, what we are going to do is we are going to show you uh, how we can use Rebuild. So first of all, let's see that Rebuild is installed. <laughs> and the next step will be uh, to find a specific environment that we will, will want to use uh, to compile our code. So we already have, some, we have uh, something that is called uh, environment registry. That is also deployed on my PC in this case, but uh, <clears throat> and we will, and now we will issue rebuild search command to check what kind of the environments we already have in our uh, shared and shared repository. So we have uh, we have here uh, 
uh, the build environment for Raspberry Pi, and we are going to deploy it. So we'll, uh, Dmitry will run uh, rbuild deploy command that will deploy this environment. And this is something that we need to do only once. So once the environment is deployed uh, to local machine, we can uh, use it many times until we change this environment, and then we will have another version of the environment. But until we change it, we need to deploy it only once. And once it is deployed, you can uh, instantly use it. So now Dmitry can run uh, rbuild run with the environment name. Oh, sorry. And before that, you can see that I have different environments uh, locally. And this is the one that we just deployed from the <coughs> repository. And now we can uh, issue rebuild run command with the environment name and just run make to compile our source code. As you can see, that we are using a <coughs> specific tool chain uh, to compile our code. And if you look at our local files, we, we, can, we can see the, the build artifact here. <coughs> we can use our environment also inter, in interactive mode. So in this case, we don't, ex we don't uh, tell rebuild what command we, we want to use. We just uh, run rebuild run with the environment name. And now we can run different commands inside of the environment. So we can see that this environment is, for example, is based on Ubuntu. And we can run here also commands. So let's run make clean and make again. And you will see that we run exactly the same, uh, the same command with the same tool chain again. <coughs> OK, so thank you. So now let's see how, how it works, how actually rebuild works. So we are leveraging uh, Linux containers. And uh, one of the magics that we are doing is that we are uh, mapping the local, uh, local file system into the container in order to preserve all the, all the permissions and uh, ownership when we, when we work with our source code. So the source code is located locally on our file system while we work with different environments. And the good thing is that it can work on almost any modern OS. So it's not only for Linux, but we can run it on Mac OS and on, on, on Windows as well, because they all support now Linux containers. <coughs> uh, you can check the project here in GitHub. So like, let's look at the, at the, at the architecture. So, uh, so first thing, uh, as you already saw, we use the rebuild CLI to interact with the re with rebuild. And this is a gateway for the, or for the developers or for your scripts on CI or uh, build server to use rebuild. We have also something that we called environment registry. Uh, and we can work with several registries now. We can work with uh, Docker Hub uh, if you want your if you want your environment images to be public, we can work with Docker private registry. And we have our own rebuild uh, native registry. And we are le leveraging Docker engine to run the, and manage the container images. And the usage model is that we have this environment registry that is centralized to either our project or our organization. And we have developers that can work with that, build servers, CI servers or support and field engineers. And uh, of course, we, we have, uh, and later sh we'll show it as well, we have a local workflow as well. So you don't have to push your environments uh, to registry. But in most cases, of course, you would like to share them and to have the same environments between uh, different members of your project. So let's talk about Rebuild CLI. Uh, and we have, when we build CLI, we had several concepts. So first of all, it should be seamless for the developer execution. As you saw, it's easy to use it. All you need, you use your uh, existing scripts that you used before that to build your software. 
and just prefix it with rebuild run. And there is no, no need to know anything about Docker, Docker files, or other container technologies, because we don't want additional knowledge to be Sometimes your, your build system is already complicated enough. We don't want to put another complication on that and, and start dealing with how to manage Docker files. <clears throat> another thing is that we use a, a convention for naming. So there's a name and tag. And the tag should be used for uh, uh, <clears throat> showing a different version of your environment. So this is specifically used for. Um, if you want to update your environment, update packages in your environment, so during the life cycle of the, of the build environment and so the development environment, you might update it, and, and this way you can keep track of the history of the updates. And environment registry, as, we as, as I showed in the architecture slide, uh, <coughs> stores environment registries and env en enables you the sharing of the environments between the team members. So what kind of the environments we can support? We can work now with the Docker Hub. So this is a public. Uh, <coughs> in this case, uh, your images will be public. And this is great if you work on some project and you want, uh, you want the development environment for your project to be uh, sh sh public, publicly shared. So this is a good option for you. The other option is Docker private re registry. This is the case if you want uh, to deploy it locally in your organization and uh, rebuild native registry. So this is if you don't want to deal too much with the uh, configuration of the registries. <clears throat> As I said, we support Linux, Mac OS, and Windows. Uh, let's talk about installation of rebuild. Uh, so rebuild is actually a Ruby gem. And uh, the dependencies is uh, a Docker and uh, Ruby 2.0 or, or higher. And the way you install it, you just run, after you install Ruby, you just run gem install rebuild, and it deploys everything that is needed to use rebuild in your environment. And after you install rebuild, so the quick start is you can already run rebuild help to understand what you should do with rebuild. We already configured rebuild in this case uh, to work with uh, Docker Hub, and we put some uh, environments to Docker Hub already for the popular uh, platforms, and we are adding more. So the moment you deploy the rebuild, you already can uh, deploy environments, and you already can compile your code. <coughs> uh, there's a configuration file for. Uh, for rebuild, it's located in your home uh, directory under uh, .rebuild, rebuild.conf. And in this file, you can configure uh, different options of uh, what type of uh, registry you want to use for your, for, your con uh, for, your, for your environments. So this is the way you configure the Docker Hub. You can configure uh, rebuild environment, or you can configure Docker private registry. And let's talk about uh, workflows, uh, how you work with, uh, with your build environments. So the basic usage, as we saw in the demo, is uh, you do the search, you find the environment that you want to use, you deploy it, and then you run. And of course, uh, this part is need, need to be done only once for each version of your for an environment that you want to use. Yeah, and, and we already saw this in the demo. So actually, okay, we are searching, and we can deploy the environment, and then immediately we can use it. And again, we already showed in the demo the interactive uh, usage of uh, build environment. So you, you don't need uh, to execute one, com one command uh, after each other. You can, you, you can enter your build environment, in, and you can execute the, your commands inside of the environment itself. And uh, of course, there are several things that you need to remember that the environment itself is not changing during the, during the uh, rbuild run pro, uh, command. So when you execute this command, you cannot change the environment itself. And uh, the files that are created uh, due to your uh, build execution, 
uh, preserve with correct permission and ownership. Now, in case if you want to modify your environment, you have a little bit different process. When you run rebuild modify uh, with your environment name, in this case, you can add packages or update packages into your environment. You can change uh, environment variables if you need. And then you can commit your environment locally, and then you can publish it into the repository. <clears throat> if you want to work only locally, so then you just run rbuild, uh, modify, and commit. So this is an example of how you can do it. So you run rbuild, modify, modify with the environment name, and then you can run different commands to update the environment. And uh, or of course, do the same in the interactive mode. Get status of the environment. So you can see that it was mo actually modified, and you can commit the changes. If you want to revert the changes that you did to environment, you can always use rbuild checkout and revert the changes that you did to your environment. And another thing is the environment creation. So we showed you how you can use ready-made environment, how we, you can update environment. But now, let's say you want to create environments from scratch. So the workflow is that you run rbuild create to create the initial version of the environment. Then you run rbuild modify, commit, and publish. So that's actually already a modify workflow that you saw before. And there are two ways that you can create your environment. One is you can use the base image that is located in your uh, <coughs> environment repository or either on the Docker Hub, so you can use the uh, public uh, container image that is published, uh, sorry, official container image that is uh, published there for one of the distros. And another way is to use the file, uh, file system and to create uh, the environment from scratch. And then after you commit it, you can publish it into the repository. So let's put it, everything together and see how we can create this uh, environment that you used in the first demo to compile, a Raspberry for, uh, to compile our demo for a Raspberry Pi. How we can create it from scratch. Uh, so Dmitry will help me here as well. Uh, we didn't know what will be the state of the internet connection here, so we cheated a little bit. Uh, actually, I have already the Raspberry Pi toolchain. I already got it from GitHub, but actually it's one command. Okay, we just need to clone. Uh, you need to clone the RPI tools, so they are already here. And now, uh, <coughs> let's see what. And we have already initial repository. Once again, I didn't want to create it from uh, Ubuntu image uh, from scratch. It will take something like three minutes, but I didn't know, didn't know what will be the state of the internet connection here. So just in case, anyway, we, we, just, create, we just run rbuild create minus base Ubuntu 16.04 uh, and created this RPI Raspberry and initial. Uh, <coughs> so in, initial repository. Uh, initial environment, and uh, we are going to modify it in order to use it with Raspberry Pi. So actually, we need to, what we need to do here is we need to copy our toolchain into the, into the environment, and we need, to set, uh, we need to set environment variables for, uh, <coughs> for the make to call correct uh, compiler. So that's what Dmitry will, is going to do now. Okay, so now we can exit the environment and we can see that it was modified and committed. 
And after we save the, after we commit the environment, we can immediately use it again. As you can see it here in the list of our local environments. Okay, so here it is. Here's the compilation result with the environment we just created uh, during this demo. So the thing is that uh, it took us, I don't know, four minutes now, but uh, we know that in some organization to, to add additional tool chain to their build system might take between several hours to several days. Uh, <coughs> so, uh, in addition, we can, of course, work with our uh, local environment. So we can, as we saw, we can list them, we can delete our environments, and we can save and load, we can save environments into the um, Docker image that can be uploaded to the re repositories that we don't support currently, uh, or, and can be loaded from, from a Docker file as well. Uh, sorry, not the, uh, the Docker image. Uh, so. Just a demonstration of how to use those commands as well. And another thing that we can do is that we can modify um, environment variables for each development environment. So for example, we can set different compilers inside of the environment and then save the different version of each environment. So we can create, for example, basic environment that will use Clang, and then we can use another version of the same environment that just that will use GCC, for example. <coughs> and uh, in case if rebuild fails for some reason, we have debugging mechanisms that you can use. You can enable tracing and save some logs that will help uh, to understand what went wrong. So once again, uh, it's here on GitHub. And just to summarize, uh, what we wanted to achieve is the seamless usage of the, develop, of the development environments, to have the isolated environments for our usage, and we wanted to, to be able to easily share those environment between, environments between team members. Uh, what we want to do in the future is we want to add the role management for a rebuild native registry. So you will have, uh, so you will enable different uh, team members uh, the ability to create the environments and only others can uh, use them. Uh, we want to support multiple registries at the same time. We want to add uh, ID plugins. So you would use rebuild uh, straight from your favorite IDs. Uh, we want to use uh, to add USB redirection for uh, non-Linux hosts, so you can uh, also deploy your uh, build artifacts on the devices from uh, rebuild when you use it n n not on Linux but on other OSs as well, and additional tracking of environment usage. Uh, <coughs> questions. Uh, we just started, so uh, we, we, we definitely are going there. So uh, we actually, just now, one of our guys is creating integration with Yakto. He's working on that. And uh, we are adding additional, additional uh, environments and additional uh, platforms that there will be already ready-made environments. So when you install Rebuild you, and, you, and you go to, to our Docker Hub, you, can create, you just instantly can deploy the environment 
for the specific platform. Of course, you can do it by yourself, but we want to, do, to give uh, uh, the ability even, even not to do that as well. So just you know, use, use uh, ready-made environments. Sorry? For Raspberry Pi, I mean, if you see, we, have, we already have the contents. Mm -hmm. And you just uh, lay over it on the Ubuntu and you just pack it as a Docker. Yeah, so, so you, just, you just package the toolchain inside of the rebuild environment. You don't so, have the contents already there. Yeah. So, so, so you can take snapshots of your file system with the or libraries and toolchains and convert it to so actually, we do have some tool chains inside. So when we saw it, uh, when we did the, uh, our, uh, um, there are some more here. So we have for uh, NRF, uh, NRF52 uh, tool chain, and we have Raspberry Pi tool chain, we have uh, BeagleBoard tool chain, and we are adding more tool chains inside. But uh, you can add any tool chain, so it's just, uh, it's up to you. No, no, it's, it's um, so sometimes you need different distros as uh, we know that our proprietary uh, tool chains that ask you for specific Ubuntu or Fedora versions, for example, and quite all that actually. So you can pack, every, you, you can pack specific version of the operating system there. So you can see here, by the way, I, for, for s some other project I did, I use the rebuild environments for old Fedora here. So they are based on Fedora 20, Fedora 22, Fedora 23 with different, different uh, tools installed there. So I could test uh, some things on, on, on the quite old Fedora distributions. Okay, so thank you very much. And uh, calls to actions, you can install rebuild, just run gem install rebuild, uh, send us emails. Uh, if you have some questions, go to GitHub, uh, see the wiki, see the, and clone, clone the code. We have here uh, some rebuild cheat sheet for the commands that you can use. You can go, uh, there's a link from our build DIO as well, but you can go directly. Uh, Thank you very much.